Now, most houses in my neighborhood at least have a smart doorbell on the front of their home. And a few more have a keypad or a smart door lock, but that's a little bit more rare. Having both of these on your front door is super convenient. You can see what packages get delivered, check and see who's out the door, let friends and family in, and ensure your house is safe when your kids inevitably leave your front door unlocked. But it didn't strike me until today's product arrived, why do we have two separate products? Wouldn't it just be easier if these were both combined into a single item? That's where today's new IoT product comes in. So if this is something that sounds interesting to you, then stay tuned to today's video where we're gonna be taking a look at the new Eufy Video Smart Lock. So this product is actually meant to replace an existing deadbolt, not a lever lock or a standard turn handle. So just keep that in mind. If you need to see the list of compatible doors, based on size and depth, you can go to this link here below. It'll take you to Eufy's website where they have a document describing which type of doors work well for this lock. It works for most doors, but just check it just in case. So for the first part of the kit that we're gonna talk about, it's the outdoor unit. The outdoor unit is what contains the 2K camera, the fingerprint reader, and of course the keypad. Then below that, we've got the doorbell button, which when opened, reveals the backup keyway. Now, in addition to the 2K camera, this has both passive infrared and radar-based motion detection. So the cool thing about that is in different temperatures and lighting conditions, it can still detect motion. And it can also differentiate between somebody approaching the door and leaving the door. So you can get customized notifications based on if somebody's coming into the house or leaving the house. Then on top is the high-speed fingerprint reader. Eufy claims that this fingerprint reader can recognize a fingerprint within three tenths of a second. So that's super fast and convenient to unlock your front door. If you don't wanna use the fingerprint reader or you wanna give out a guest code, you can use the lighted keypad below. This product supports a passcode between four and eight numbers. So of course this item is gonna be sitting out in the cold and the heat all year long. So it is IP65 rated for dust and water resistance. It also has an operating temperature range between negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit and plus 160 degrees Fahrenheit. It has numerous durability certifications, so you know that it's gonna last a good amount of time. Now, the clever thing about this product is that you have five independent ways of unlocking. We've, of course, already seen the fingerprint reader and the numeric keypad. So if you set it up with Google or Amazon Alexa, you can use your smart assistant of choice to unlock and lock the front door. Of course, it's always advised to have a pin set up on your voice assistant for this reason. And of course, you can use the Eufy security app to unlock and lock the door remotely. And finally, as we mentioned before, it does come with a set of backup keys, just in case you get locked out or the unit dies. And on that subject, on the bottom of the unit is actually a USB-C port that you can use to power the lock just in case you ignore all the battery warnings and the battery dies. This way you can plug in a USB-C battery bank and power the unit so you can get the door unlocked and then go recharge the battery. So now onto the indoor unit. Now you notice that the indoor unit comes in two pieces. There's the plate that attaches directly to the door. Then there's the housing that contains the electronics. We'll see here in the next section how to get this all installed. Now on the inside unit, you'll notice this large battery door here. The system comes with a 10,000 milliamp hour battery. And this is smartly positioned on the inside of the door so you don't get any detrimental effects of cold weather on your lithium battery. This lithium battery is rechargeable with USB-C. So if the battery gets low while you're at home, just remove the battery cover, take the battery out, plug it in and charge it for a few hours. Once the LED is indicated, then the battery is full and you can stick it back on there again. Now, the unit will last about 120 days on a full charge using all features. So in the event that the battery is low and you are unable to recharge the battery, you can always disable some features like video and motion detection to save batteries so the lock will continue to operate. Or you can use the backup port on the bottom if it does happen to go dead. Also in the back is the sync button, which we will need to use as part of the setup procedure, and the inside thumb turn. Now, one interesting feature about this particular product is that it supports automatic locking. Now, it can differentiate using the accelerometers on board the unit to tell if the door has been open or closed, and then lock the unit if it's been closed for a certain amount of time. This is all configurable in the app, of course. Then, if we look in the bottom section of the box, we'll find the Wi-Fi bridge slash chime. So this operates primarily as a Wi-Fi extender in order to get a better signal closer to your door. It also operates as an indoor chime, so you can hear when the doorbell is pressed. And finally, this is where all of your video is stored. Now, no micro SD card is included with the kit, but I would consider it a requirement. This will take up to 128 gigabyte micro SD card. They recommend using a class 10 or better SD card so you don't get any issues with recording speed. And then on the top of this is the sync button, which we use as part of the setup process. Now, other items included in the kit are a set of emergency backup keys. I've been on the internet long enough, and I know if you show a key off, somebody can take a picture of it and make a key, so that's why these are taped up. Also included is a deadbolt and a strike plate if the one installed on your current deadbolt is not compatible with the system. And finally, we of course have a bag of hardware. All right, now that we've had an overview of the features and what comes in the box, let's get this thing installed. Before we get started with the installation, here's a couple of quick tips. One, you're gonna need a screwdriver. 
That's pretty much the only tool you'll need for this entire project. If you do have to modify any holes to make anything fit on your door, of course you'll need a drill for that, but for most users, you'll just need a screwdriver. You obviously want to complete this installation on a nice day, and preferably when it's nice and bright outside, that way you can easily see what's going on. Make sure you do the installation with the door open and you're on the inside of the house. When you're doing your testing, make sure you test everything while the door is open, that way you don't lock yourself out or you have a backup way of getting into the house. So of course, the first step is to remove the existing deadbolt. Now this is gonna vary depending on the type of deadbolt you have on your house. I'm actually removing my Schlage Z-Wave deadbolt from the front of the house. I'll probably end up finding another use for it somewhere else, but it's pretty worn after many years of service. Once you remove the actual lock hardware, but before you remove the deadbolt itself, check and see if you can make the existing deadbolt fit your new lock. If you do need to switch out the deadbolt hardware, then of course remove the two screws holding the deadbolt into place and slide it out. You're gonna to wanna to slide in the new, the new deadbolt and ensure that it's aligned in the same direction as the existing deadbolt was. Now, if you have to modify the strike plate, the same thing applies here. You're gonna to have to remove the two screws to take the strike plate off and then place the new strike plate that comes with it on the door frame. Now, there are two color options for the strike plate depending on what you're replacing, either a silver or an oiled bronze. Now, make sure you use the long included screws to secure the strike plate to the door frame. Most security experts tell you to use longer screws if possible, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, my door frame is skinny. You see it's got the glass here, so I'm unable to use very long screws, but these ones fit just fine. Now we're gonna take the outdoor unit and slide it in through the hole, ensuring that the two cables are able to run inside and not getting pinched. Make sure when you do fit this in place, ensure that the rotating shaft of the outdoor unit passes through the deadbolt hardware. Then once it's in place, you might wanna use some masking tape to hold the keypad to the door frame if you don't have a friend to help you. Then we're gonna run the two long screws through the inside plate and tighten them down so the outdoor unit is secured against the door. Now do not over tighten these because you do not want to break the hardware. Next, we connect the electronics harness and the antenna plug to the inside unit. Then ensure the inside thumb turn screw is turned all the way to the right or the unlocked position. Then you need to slide the inside plate over the rotating hardware for the outdoor unit. Once it's in place and everything fits snugly against the door, then install the two screws in the battery compartment. Once everything is installed and snug, you need to make sure you test the throw of the deadbolt. If this throw is not smooth, you need to take everything apart and make sure that it's aligned. If the action of opening and closing the deadbolt is not smooth, this will one, consume more battery, or two, could, could cause the unit to bind up and throw an error message. So once everything is confirmed it's smooth, then if you can open and close the deadbolt with the door open smoothly, then go ahead and close the door with you on the inside and test it with the door closed. If you run into any problems here, it's most likely the strike plate is not in the right location. So now the hardware is all installed, so let's go ahead and pop the battery in, then let's hop into the app and get the unit connected to your home network. So normally in a video like this, I would take you through each individual step on how to set up the device on your home network and get it added to the app. I think for most users, they can just follow along with the instructions provided in the app by Eufy. But I will go ahead and give you a few tips that I picked up while setting the system up. So the first one is the key placement of the Wi-Fi bridge. With most IoT devices, the number one problem people face is the actual signal quality to their device. And even if you have a home like mine with multiple access points, I still have areas with less than perfect Wi-Fi signal, and in those areas, I always run into problems. So for me, I always try to locate that wireless bridge as close to the door as possible. You're gonna be tempted to locate it into a more central family area, so you've got that chime you can hear, but I always like putting them as close to the door as possible to maximize the quality for the device. This ends up saving you battery because the unit doesn't have to wake up as long to send the video data out to your recorder. It also makes the unit a lot more reliable, and this is the case with all battery-powered IoT devices, especially the cameras. Now, the next set of tips all kind of go together, and that is to definitely make sure you're following the instructions exactly. One thing I ran into was with the Wi-Fi bridge. When I first plugged it in, I waited about a minute and decided to try to go ahead and set it up while the red light was still flashing. The instructions told me to wait for the light to turn blue, but I didn't do that and got kind of concerned because the unit took quite a while to finish starting up. Make sure you plug the Wi-Fi bridge in and let it start up before you get the lock installed because it will take a while to get started up the first time. Other than that, I just followed the instructions and it was very easy to get set up. If you do run into questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. So real quickly, let's go ahead and jump into the application and take a quick tour. So when you first get the device set up on the network, it's actually gonna set up both the bridge and the lock as separate devices. Now it's important to actually review the settings for both of these because there are settings specific to each device. So for example, if we go into the door chime, so the first thing we see on the home screen is the amount of storage that's available for the SD card installed. 
We can go into the audio settings and set the different tones. You can also independently set the prompt volume for when it gives you a text-to-speech notification. Under notifications, we can set what type of notifications we get from the app itself. And then under general, this is where if you need to, you can go in and modify the Wi-Fi that it's connected to. Then we go to the video smart lock and you'll see it's got a preview of the last time video was recorded on the device. You also have a button right here where you can lock and unlock the door by pressing and holding on the lock button. It also gives you a quick battery status. If you quickly wanted to get to settings, you can tap the three dots and then click on the gear icon to take you right into the settings without loading the camera's feed first. We're gonna go ahead and click the play button and that's gonna take us in and show us a live view coming from the camera. Now one thing to notice in my installation is the big white piece of wood on the left. Because my door is recessed in slightly and the camera, it's fixed, a good quarter of my camera is taken up by the door frame. But for now, I, I'm, I'm just gonna have to live with having a fourth of my video cut off by the door frame. And I'll go ahead and bring up on screen what the actual video looks like. It's pretty high quality. It is a 2K sensor. Of course, it's bright daylight right now. You can zoom in and see across the street at neighbors. You can see a lot of details right here from the live view screen. Below that is actually another lock and unlock button. Unfortunately, on my fold, it gets a little cut off because the screen ratio is weird. Then at the bottom, we have our standard options. So we can record a clip, so if there's something going on live view, we can click that and it will record it and save it to your phone. We can take a screenshot. Now, one of the cool features on this particular doorbell camera, like we saw on the Auso a few months ago, was the ability to do quick responses. So you can actually set up your own custom quick responses. So right now it comes preloaded with, excuse me, can I help you? But you can go into the settings and you can add your own one here. So we can say, we are not interested please go away. So now you have this available as a pre-recorded message that you can send if you're not at home or, you, or you're in a place where you can't use the microphone. So that's pretty neat. And then of course you can enable sound by clicking the sound button down here in the corner. Here in the top right, we can click the gear icon and then that's gonna take us into the full settings for the camera. So at the top, we can see a quick Wi-Fi status and battery status of the unit. We can click on motion detection. If you only want the system to send you an alert or start recording when a person is detected versus just standard motion, you can set that here in the app. You can set the distance because it uses that radar to be able to tell how far away the person is. So it's only gonna set it off if it's within 10 feet or 15 feet. You can set a loitering detection, which if it detects a person and that person stays outside for a set amount of time, it will play one of the pre-canned responses. Only enable this if you have a fairly low traffic area, you don't ever have people out in the front yard. You can also enable leaving detection, which is pretty cool because it does have that radar motion detector on there. It can detect if somebody is leaving the house versus approaching the house or coming into the house. Of course, you can also go in and set a zone to indicate where it's gonna detect activity or motion in. We've already seen the quick response menu, which is down here. Then we've got the power manager. Similar to the Eufy cameras I reviewed a few weeks ago, you're able to set the battery balance that you wanna use, whether you want it to consume more power and record more and more often, or you wanna conserve power and have it record less often. This is where you could also turn it into low power mode where it will disable video and motion detection and just operate the lock. And then you can go here under, it also tells you the current battery and the number of events up at the top. So you can kind of gauge how much it's being detected. We have the feature for auto lock. As I mentioned in the introduction, you can set when the door will automatically lock when it's detected that it's closed. By using the sensors on the unit, it can tell if the door is open or closed, so it won't lock the door if the door is open. Whatever the timer you set, after that amount of time, it'll go ahead and lock the door. And you can schedule when this happens. So if you don't want it to happen during high traffic times, but at night, you can set that as well. Now as a security measure, it, it has wrong try protection, which just means if you put the wrong code in so many times, it'll lock the lockout, preventing users from trying to guess a password. And you can set the number of attempts that a user can do, or you can also set the length of how long it locks out the lock. And this applies to both the pin and also the fingerprint. Another interesting feature is the scramble passcode. What this allows you to do is type in any number of digits up to 12, and as long as your passcode appears somewhere in that 12 digits, it will unlock the door. This is if you're living in a high traffic area and somebody could peer over your shoulder while you're putting your pin code in, you're able to confuse them by adding some additional numbers into them. So that's it for the major features. So let's go into the rest of the settings. So we can change, we can turn on and off the watermark. We can set the video quality. By default, this comes as full HD. I went ahead and knocked mine up to 2K because storage is cheap. Under night vision, we can set whether or not we have night vision automatically turned on. And then below this is the night vision optimization, which is really nice for my camera because, so this will exclude that part of the image from the calculation on whether or not it should turn it into night vision mode. So that's pretty nice. And then under audio settings, this allows us to tweak the audio settings for the outdoor unit, how loud the ringtone is, how loud the beep is. And then in here, we actually have an option to set the ringtone for the inside chime, which I'm not sure why that's not on the chime settings, but it also allows you to set an Alexa. If you happen to have Alexa, you could use those as chimes as well. So you can go in here and customize the ringtones. There's So we calibrated the lock as part of the setup procedure, but if you happen to move the lock or you run into problems, this is gonna recalibrate all of the different sensors to know when the door is open and closed. And then finally, 
finally, we get down to the manage access. And this is the important setting where we actually go in and enroll pins and fingerprints. So the enrollment process, we just click add access. We put in a name. And this is where you can set whether this person has 24 by seven access or you can set a specific time. So for example, I can limit their access to only certain days of the week or certain times of the day. Then you can enter your passcode and this passcode can be anywhere between four and eight numbers. Then you have the option to enroll the person with fingerprints. Now again, you can just click skip the top if you don't want to enroll somebody here, but the fingerprint enrollment is just like it is on your iPhone or your Android phone or your Windows laptop. And I will say the fingerprint reader is excellent. It's very fast to respond. And you can always go back in here and enroll a second or third fingerprint and also change the access time later on. And the nice thing too is when that person uses their code, you'll get a customized notification showing that person has come into the house. And then under general, where we see things like software version number, IP address, things like that. Now for the last section, I kind of skipped it, is notifications. And this is where you can get in and set what type of notifications you want to receive on the phone when an event happens. You can also customize what happens when you click the notification. Either it'll take you to that history event that you clicked on, or it'll take you directly to live view. And just like on the cameras, you can select what type of notification you get. So that's all the features that come with the application. And just as a quick reminder before we hop into the last section, if this video has provided you any help, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. That really helps to drive the video out to other users to find it. A large percentage of viewers on these videos aren't subscribed to the channel. Surprisingly, on my Wise version 3 video, 99% of the users are not subscribed to the channel, which makes sense because I'm a pretty new channel. But if you like the content, please make sure you subscribe. I've got quite a few more product review videos coming out this holiday season. So quickly, let's jump into my initial impressions on the Eufy Video Smart Lock. So for the most part, I've been blown away with this smart doorbell. It seems to combine a lot of different features that I think a lot of users like to have on their smart home into one unit. Of course, it's battery powered, so that comes with its own set of disadvantages. It's another battery that you have to maintain and monitor, and also you're limited, you cannot do 24 by seven recording. Now, Eufy does say that this is going to be compatible with the HomeBridge 3, which I reviewed in, that, in my last Eufy video. You'll be able to dump video from the Wi-Fi bridge onto the HomeBridge. So hopefully here in the near future, you'll be able to integrate the Wi-Fi bridge to the home base and dump video into the home base and store it on that same hard drive. I would like to have seen some onboard storage on the actual doorbell itself as a backup just in case you have Wi-Fi issues or signal problems. That way at least the recording will get stored somewhere. But I understand that's because if that unit gets broken or stolen, then you wanna have the video put somewhere else. But some cameras, like on the Wise Outdoor, you actually have dual SD card slots. You can put one in the camera and one on the base unit and be able to store video in both places. So another slight knock on the unit is the camera position. Unfortunately, because of the way some doors like mine are recessed, a full quarter of my camera is blocked by the door frame. I would have liked to see some sort of adjustment, a slight rotation that you can make to the camera and sensor. Because of the way the lock is designed, there's no way to shim it because it has that shaft and screws that run through it. So there's no way to make any sort of adjustment there. It's a fixed angle. So that might be limiting to some folks that have a hallway or an entryway before you get to your front door or if you have a large door frame like mine. But that's just sort of the nature of the beast, I guess. Overall, I think this is an excellent solution for somebody who wants a one and done for security in the front of your house. It's fairly simple and easy to set up as long as you're comfortable taking your lock apart. It comes with all the hardware needed to get it set up. So it's super easy for even those who are just getting started with smart home technology. Actually, just this week, we had a vehicle get broken into in my neighborhood, which if that user would have had their doorbell camera set up, they would have probably caught the suspects on there. Fortunately, I was able to help them with some footage off my cameras. But the number one thing I hear from people is, I've got a doorbell camera, I just haven't set it up yet, I haven't installed it yet. So obviously, this is gonna be a little bit more complicated, but there's no electrical work involved. And so I think a lot of people, this might be a little bit easier to get installed. So hopefully, a product like this helps people get into the smart home world. So I think if you're in the market for a smart lock or video doorbell, this would be a great solution to get it all done in one go. Now, this combination lock and doorbell clocks in at around $400 standard price, which is a little on the hefty side, but you do have to remember that you are getting two things combined into one. If you end up spending $200 on a smart lock and $200 on a high-end doorbell, then it's about the same price of what you're, of what you're dealing with with this unit. Now, if there are any Black Friday deals, I will post a pinned comment to this video as long as those deals are active. So hopefully you can pop in and save some money. But I do think with the ease of installation and all the features that you get with it, I think it's worth that price point, especially if it's adding an additional layer of convenience and security to your household. So again, if you'd like to check one of these out, I've got links down in the description. And again, I wanna thank Eufy for partnering with me on this video and sending out the unit so I can take a look at it. If you'd like to take a look at my previous video on the Eufy Cam 3 and Homebase 3, 
free. I've got a link to it right up here. And if you'd like to check out my other videos on cameras and doorbells, I've got a link right here below it. And as always, if you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel by clicking our logo right here. Thanks again, and I'll see you on the next video.